Hello there, welcome and welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Lynette and I'm going to be taking you through yet another simple tutorial. Today's focus is going to be a transfer of interest in land. So what is a transfer of interest in land you ask? This is a passing of interest in land from one party to another. This process can only be used when the transfer row is a sole proprietor or in the case of a joint tenancy or a tenancy in common where all the proprietors want to sell the parcel in its entirety. Only a practicing advocate can initiate this process. All parties involved as well as the advocate must be registered on the platform. If you have not registered, kindly check out the link above for a tutorial on individual registration. The proprietor must have their parcel listed under my property section. Please refer to the link above if, as a proprietor, you do not see your property listed in that particular section. Kindly note that whether you are the buyer or the seller, you will only be able to see the applications that have been initiated on your behalf. As an advocate, you shall be required to have the following. For starters, a current practicing certificate, an account on the platform, and last but not least, you have to have your account upgraded from that of a public user to an advocate on the platform. If you have not upgraded your account, check on the link above for the tutorial. To initiate the process, first switch from a public user to that of an advocate account. Transfer of interest in land is under the land registration services. You may click on the quick links or better yet, you can click on the view more option. Click on transfer services, then transfer of interest in land. So this application is based on Form 33 of the Land Registration Act 2012. As an advocate, you will be able to see a list of all applications tied to your account. So the applications are listed into the following. 1. Pending. These are applications that require your action or the action of the parties included in the transaction. The actions may range from and not limited to OTP verification, execution, surrender of the title document, or payment of pending invoices. Two, ongoing. These are applications that you are involved in but do not require your action. This allows you to keep track of the progress of your application. Three, completed. These are applications that have been worked on by the ministry and have been approved. Four, rejected. These are applications that have been worked on by the ministry but have been rejected for one reason or another. The reason shall be communicated through the notifications tab. 5. Cancelled. These are applications that have either been cancelled by the parties involved or the registrar. To initiate an application, click on the new application button. Read through the frequently asked questions which will guide you on the requirements of the process. Once you do so, click on the next button to be navigated to the Proprietorship Details tab and enter the required information as provided by the client. Enter the parcel number as indicated on the title document. Add the transfer row by the Adisasa ID, then click on the Search Action button. The transfer row can either be an individual or a company. Upon clicking the Search button, a pop-up will require you to select the category of the person to execute as a transfer row. This can either be self or an attorney. If the transfer row is a company, the execution options will be either attorney or director. If you select the self option, the transfer row will execute for themselves. If you select the attorney option, you will be required to key in the system generated attorney reference number, then click on search. The name of the attorney will be displayed and for the first time users, you will be required to add their Adisasa ID in the provided space, then click on Verify. For the case where the parcel is held in common, kindly ensure to add all the proprietors, otherwise the application will be rejected. So next, we move to the transferee details. Select the transferee using their holding type. This could either be sole ownership, this is if you are the only owner of the parcel. It could be a joint proprietorship. This is where a parcel is owned by several individuals without any specifications of what proportion they own. And lastly, it could either be a proprietorship in common. This is where the parcel is owned by two or more individuals with distinct proportions. Add the transferee, which is more or less a buyer, whether it is an individual or a company using their Adisasa ID and click on search. 
As we had mentioned earlier, a pop-up will require you to select the category of person to execute as the transferee. This could either be self or an attorney. If the transferee is a company, the execution options will either be attorney or director. If the director option is selected, the registered company directors will execute. If you select the self option, the transferee will execute for themselves. If you select the attorney option, you will be required to key in the system generated attorney reference number, then click on search. The name of the attorney will be displayed and for the first time users, you will be required to add the Adisasa ID in the provided space, then click on verify. If it is a proprietorship in common, you shall be required to define the shares of every buyer. The system validates the information to ensure that the total number of shares adds up to 100%. Click on next to be navigated to the transfer details tab. Here you will be required to enter the nature of interest to be transferred, e.g. leasehold or a freehold. Enter the consideration amount, i.e. the agreed selling price of the parcel. Add a pickup parcel using their Adisasa ID. The individual must be registered on the system. They shall be tasked with picking the title document once the process is successfully completed. Let's move on to the drawn by details. Here you will be required to key in the details of the law firm during the transfer. The required details include the law firm's name, their phone number, their physical address, their email, and their postal address, and where applicable, the website and the street address of the firm. So we are going to move on to the additional provisions section. Here you will be required to add any additional provisions you'd wish to include in the transfer by typing the provisions in the text box then clicking on the add button when done. We are now at the valuation details section. The applicant shall select the status of their land, i.e. developed or undeveloped. If developed, they will enter the type of development. They will also select the category of valuer they require to do the valuation on the property at hand. This will allow for the private valuers who have been recently mandated by law to conduct valuation for stamp duty. In the stamp duty section, the applicant will select whether or not to apply for an exemption of stamp duty based on the nature of the property and the parties. If the applicant applies for an exemption, they will have to select the section under which the exemption applies. If you happen to select other section or legal notice, you will be required to provide additional information about the same. Once done, click on the next button to be navigated to the documents upload tab. In this tab, if the applicant had applied for an exemption, they will have to upload a mandatory application for adjudication of some duty document. To upload, you will click on the Choose File button to select the document from your local storage. To upload additional documents, e.g. a sale agreement, you will key in the name of the document in the field provided to activate the Choose File button. Click on the button to select the desired document from your local storage. Once done, click on Next. You have now been navigated to the Confirmation tab. Here you are required to countercheck the information that you have provided before submitting. If everything is in order, click on the submit button. A confirmation pop-up will appear on your screen, where you will click yes to confirm submission. Upon successful submission, the advocate will be directed to the execution page where he or she is expected to select the parties they are representing. They will do so by clicking on accept if they are to represent an individual and reject if they are not. After doing so, the next step is for the advocate to append his or her signature on the signing area provided using a mouse. Alternatively, the advocate may choose to use any other device to sign based on his or her convenience. So the following are the options provided. Using a QR code. By scanning the QR code provided, the advocate will click on the link that will be generated 
to be navigated to a signing pad on the device they use to scan. You can either choose to send the link to the email or phone number. Selecting this action will prompt the advocate to enter their email or phone number respectively and the system will send a link to the preferred channel. Clicking on the link will navigate the advocate to a signing pad on that specific device. Last but not least, you can copy the link to clipboard. This is when you have an external signing device connected to your computer whereby the advocate will copy the link and paste to the device in order to synchronize. On signing from either of the above signing options, the advocate is required to confirm submission of the signature into the system by clicking on save and clicking on confirm signing on the web platform. Kindly note that you shall await for the parties to complete their OTP confirmation and execution for you to be able to submit the application. You will be able to keep track of the confirmation progress from all the parties. So up until this point, we have been talking about the role of the advocate. Let's move on to the role of the transferor and the transferee in a transfer application. Both parties involved, i.e. the transferor and the transferee, will receive notifications on their phone, emails and through the system on the created transfer application. Upon logging into their individual accounts, each party will be required to navigate to the transfer of interest in land application and 1. Verify the application by means of an OTP code sent to them once they click on the Get OTP button. Kindly note that the OTP code is very important. This ensures that you are not included in a transaction without your consent. As a security measure, without all the OTP codes from the parties, the application will not proceed. Every party involved has the option to change the advocate representing them from the execution section. They do so by clicking on change and entering their desired advocate using their RD Sasa ID. Additionally, the parties have the option to add an advocate if the advocate who made the application does not want to represent them. This is done by clicking on the Add button, entering the advocate's RD Sasa ID number and clicking on Search, then soon thereafter clicking on Add Advocate. Each party will be required to append their signature into the system and click Save. If a new advocate is introduced in the process, they will get a notification informing them of their inclusion in the process and their role. They will also consent by way of OTP and execution via a signature pad. So once all the parties have done what is required of them, the application goes back to the advocate. The advocate will be required to submit the application. Upon submission, a ticket is raised requiring the advocate to upload a scanned copy of their client's title and to ensure that a physical copy is submitted to the ministry. Under the Invitations tab, an invite is sent requiring you to book a date when you will be available to submit the original physical copy of the title. A gate pass is issued upon booking the date which will be used to access the Ministry of Land's premises for assistance. So the application thereafter moves to the collector of stamp duty for determination of stamp duty amount. Once the stamp duty amount has been derived, you will receive a notification requiring you to pay the stamp duty fee. Kindly note that the stamp duty amount accrues monthly penalties if not paid on time.
Upon payment and submission, the application proceeds for further processing. You can keep track of the progress of your application via the details page of the application. You will be notified upon successful approval or rejection of the application. Upon approval, the pickup person shall receive an invite with information on when the title document will be ready for collection. They will be required to set up an appointment date when they will be available. If it so happens that your application is rejected, you shall be furnished with the reasons on your account. So this marks the end of our tutorial. In case you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask us in the comment section or better yet, you can reach out to our customer care team who are ready and willing to assist you with any issue that you may be encountering. Thank you for watching.